Hi everyone, welcome to the virtual tour of the Colorado Springs Utilities Water Wise Demonstration Gardens. My name is Katherine Moravec and I work as a horticulturist and a senior water conservation specialist at Colorado Springs Utilities. A little bit about me to share with you today is that I'm originally from the Denver area. I have a BS in biology from CU Boulder and an MS in horticulture from UC Davis. I've worked in landscaping for over 20 years and have worked at Colorado Springs Utilities for 11 years. And I'm really thrilled to share with you the wonderful resource of the WaterWise Demonstration Gardens. So here's our agenda for the presentation. First, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the demonstration gardens themselves. And then I'm gonna walk you through the entry gardens, the WaterWise neighborhood, and the native shrub walk. I really only have time to share with you three areas of the demonstration gardens. So those will be the three areas that we'll focus on. And then I'll share with you a few resources that you can use to work on your own landscape. So here we go, let's talk about the WaterWise Demonstration Gardens. So Colorado Springs Utilities is the sponsor of the WaterWise Demonstration Gardens. And as your Forest Service community-owned utility provider, Colorado Springs Utilities is heavily invested in helping make sure that our community has the tools and resources to be able to steward water wisely. So that's why Colorado Springs Utilities offers WaterWise landscape resources to help you steward our shared water supply at your home or business. So we have two WaterWise demonstration gardens. The main demonstration garden is at the Conservation and Environmental Center at 2855 Mesa Road, 80904. The other WaterWise demonstration garden is right in front of the Cottonwood Creek Recreation Center we call it the Cottonwood Creek Demonstration Garden. It's located at 3920 Dublin Boulevard, 80918. This is a smaller garden that is actually a great resource for people who live on the northeast side of Colorado Springs. If you visit our WaterWise Demonstration Gardens, not only will you see different approaches to WaterWise landscaping, but you'll also see many of the plants that we recommend in real life and at their mature sizes. The demonstration gardens are open to the public year round during daylight hours, and they currently are open to the public. The Mesa Conservation Garden spans about two acres, and it surrounds the Colorado Springs Utilities Conservation Center building. So if you come off of Mesa Road, there are two parking lots. You can either park in the first parking lot on the west side of the building, or you can proceed to the east side of the property and park in the large parking lot on the east side. We have quite a few different areas that you can look at with a whole purpose of trying to help you figure out ways that you can landscape successfully here in the Pikes Peak region. Hi everyone, I'm up here at the Colorado Springs Utilities WaterWise Demonstration Garden and this is a wonderful place to go if you are interested in learning how to add WaterWise plants and use WaterWise landscaping techniques in your own yard or business. So I just wanted to share with you three different tips on visiting the garden. First of all, um, the garden has an amazing array of different types of plants, but to really get the most value out of what you're seeing here, you wanna go to csu.org and look at all the resources that um, supplement what you're gonna be seeing here. So there are uh, fact sheets and videos and lots of great information. You can also go to waterwiseplants.org, which is going to give you tons of information on all the plants you're seeing here. Second, try to make a few visits throughout the year. Because we have such a beautiful summer, it's a good time to come up and take a look at the plants that are blooming during the growing season. But this garden also does a great job of looking attractive in fall and winter. And that's really important here in Colorado because we have such a long dormant season. So definitely check out this garden in the later parts of the year and into the winter as well. And then third, as you're visiting the garden, be sure you watch for wildlife. We do have a lot of rabbits and some deer. Um, every once in a while we'll get a bobcat, so just keep your eyes open. Generally speaking, the garden is a safe place to be, but um, just keep your eyes open as you're walking around so that you are aware of your surroundings. Okay, so I hope you enjoy visiting the garden. At the demonstration garden, we have 22 different areas that have different types of displays, but I'd like to share with you now a walk around that I did where I visited three specific areas of the garden, including the entry gardens, the waterwise neighborhood, and the native shrub walk. 
All right, so I'm over here close to the entrance of the demonstration garden, and this is a newly renovated area that was installed in 2019. And it's a great example of how you can get a wide variety of color and texture in your landscape to create a lot of beauty. This was designed by my coworker Lisa Pace and she did an absolutely wonderful job here. So I just wanna showcase a few of the different plants that you'll be seeing in this area. First of all, we have North Wind Switchgrass, which is a beautiful switchgrass, about three to four feet tall. And in later summer, it gets these beautiful panicles of seed heads, really gorgeous upright grass. And there's lots of different types of switchgrasses out there. We also have some allium bulbs that bloomed a little earlier in the summer and are now turning a beautiful tan color. We have dwarf baby blue rabbit brush right here. In this bed, we have yucca rostrata, which are the tall two yuccas that you see right there. These are an experiment for us, but we're hoping that they prove to be successful in our climate. We have Mexican feather grass, which has this beautiful fine texture. Coral Canyon Twin Spur, which is this perennial with a pink flower. This is a great filler because it will continue to bloom throughout the year. Here's some more of it over here. This is a South African plant, but certainly does very well in our climate. We have blue salvia right in front of our entry sign, which creates a beautiful accent here. Um, then we've got some yellow pine leaf penstemon which is this uh, perennial flower here that'll come back year after year with these really interesting yellow tubular flowers. I absolutely love this plant. It's got these very narrow um, leaves, but they persist throughout much of the year, making this plant almost evergreen. It's a really cute, tidy, low maintenance plant. Down here we have um, raspberry granita, Ice plant and Colorado Gold Gazania, both of which are not in bloom because it is early morning, but later in the day these will open up and create a beautiful display of fuchsia flowers along with gold blooms. So definitely take a look at this. And over here in this area we have Engelman Daisy. This is a native plant to Colorado that makes a really great garden plant because of its bright gold flowers. You'll see this throughout the um, Eastern Slope Mountains. It's a great landscape plant as well, Engelman Daisy. And then right behind it, we have Platinum Sage, which has a gray leaf and beautiful purplish blue flowers that are on a spike. Really attractive plant that gives you a different color leaf in the garden. So we are so happy with this garden, how it turned out. And we just can't wait for these flowers to become more mature and fill in and create a really wonderful display in our entry. Now, one thing I will point out is that when Lisa designed this, she put a lot of this sandstone uh, block in the garden to create a lot of structure. And it really creates this nice backdrop for this area. In this area too, we do have a gravel mulch um, for these plants, as you can see, but uh, this area does require a lot of hand weeding. You can see down here that we've got some weeds that we need to take out, and rock mulch certainly does that. So we didn't do this throughout the whole entire entry. We have areas down here where we transitioned to wood mulch to help keep the weeds down, and that's something that you can do in your own landscape. In the areas where you wanna have um, rock mulch, and you're willing to weed it, go ahead and do that. But in the lower maintenance areas of your yard, certainly transition to a wood chip mulch so you don't spend all your time weeding. But this is our entry garden that we are so pleased with. Many people who visit the demonstration gardens ask the question, do we water? And if so, how often do we water the displays? Yes, we do water the gardens. We um, have a variety of irrigation zones ranging from moderate water zones to very low water zones. So to us, a moderate water zone is an area that we would water during the height of summer two times per week. Now in the cooler months of spring and fall, we might drop that down a little bit, but on average, you're gonna find these moderate water areas um, water two times per week. We also have many different lawn areas throughout the garden and we water those areas from once per week all the way ranging up to three times per week. Most of the garden displays at the WaterWise Demonstration Garden are low water zones 
and those areas we water on average one time per week. We also have some very low water zones and those areas we might water only one to two times per month. We don't have any unirrigated areas at the demonstration garden because we find that during really hot dry spells, it's important to be able to provide even those very low water plants with some supplemental water to keep them looking vibrant and healthy. We have two different watering methods that we use at the demonstration garden. We do use spray irrigation for lawns, solid ground cover areas, and some of the flower beds. So any type of area where you want a solid plant cover, you can use spray irrigation. Throughout the demonstration garden, we also use drip irrigation. So we do use drip irrigation quite a bit in a lot of our flower beds, especially the newer parts of the garden. As you can see in the photograph, the lawn area on the right hand side that was actually newly planted when we took the photograph, that would be watered with spray irrigation. But the planting bed on the left, we wound drip irrigation throughout the bed and that's how that area is irrigated. So flower beds will use drip irrigation, planting beds that include some trees, shrubs, flowers and grasses would also be watered with drip irrigation. Any area that's narrower than eight feet wide, we will water with drip irrigation. And then also areas that are large but have widely spaced plants, we will use drip irrigation to water those areas. And this is really important because drip irrigation is a lot more efficient than spray irrigation because it's dripping water directly on the plant's roots at the ground level rather than spraying water through the air. Most people, when they're visiting the demonstration garden, park in the front parking lot and then start on the west side of the garden. And that's a beautiful place to look. It's a little bit of an older section of the garden. So I just wanted to show you how you can get to the newer area of the garden, which is the Waterwise neighborhood. So most people are gonna be coming from this pathway. Once you get to this spot where we're up against kind of the building and um, the area where we have the recycle bin, then go ahead and walk um, east. So it looks like we're going into a parking lot, but trust me, there's some really good displays up here. So we have five different small landscapes that showcase a water-wise grass and a planting bed that um, has water-wise perennials and shrubs that complement the theme that that landscape is built around. So behind me is the Purple House, and this is our easy care or low maintenance landscape. This is a great um, example to look at if you're looking to reduce your yard work. It has a buffalo grass front yard, which is a low water, um, low maintenance grass. You only have to mow it a few times a year. And then it's got a Kentucky bluegrass backyard, which is the right place to site your cool season, higher water turf grass, because it can tolerate higher traffic. And if, as long as you keep the size reasonable and water it efficiently, it's perfectly reasonable to include that in your yard. Now this landscape also includes a variety of perennials and shrubs that only have to be cut back once a year. So if you're looking for a way to reduce your yard work, certainly take a look at this landscape because this one has a great combination of really beautiful plants that require minimal care. And I just wanna talk about a few plants that are in bloom right now. First of all, we have in this area, a few little princess spireas. They are those tiny little shrubs in the back that get covered with pink flowers. They are so cute and um, just really tidy looking, mounding, dome shaped. So they look wonderful. Right next to them, we have this Mexican feather grass, which creates a beautiful, fine textured contrast with the little princess spirea. We have a white variegated iris right here. This bloomed earlier with purple flowers, um, but even when it's not in bloom, it's got a really nice, interesting color to it. This area right here is uh, where we have planted a basket of gold which blooms really, really bright yellow in May and is definitely a showstopper, a great plant to have. And then we have this area over here where we've got Jupiter's beard. 
Now, if you have limited space and you need just a few perennials or flowers in your yard, certainly consider Jupiter's beard. It has these clusters of pink flowers, and if you take off the spent flowers throughout the growing season, this will bloom all summer. It is fantastic. Now, just to showcase a few plants over around the corner, this is a fantastic water-wise perennial. This is called partridge feather. Beautiful gray-green foliage, and then in midsummer it gets these um, button-like yellow flowers. This is a very water-wise plant and creates a nice contrast with the green plants around it. And then we have catmint right here, which is one of the toughest plants you could possibly plant in your landscape. The deer will never eat it, and it has these beautiful spikes of light purple flowers in spring and you can get some rebloom throughout the summer. So what's nice about the Waterwise neighborhood is that in these boxes right here we have um, all of the designs and the plants in this landscape. So you can take this home or find it on csu.org and learn all about the options showcased in this particular example. So easy care landscape. All right, now I'm on the far east side of the Waterwise neighborhood, and you can see the four other uh, model landscapes that we produced to help you figure out how to um, landscape at your own home and business. The orange house right here is an example for people who live in the foothill overlay or um, on the west side of Colorado Springs. This is a great example that showcases how you deal with a sloped lot, um, what types of plants that you can have if you've got deer, and also what to do if you've got um, fire concerns where you need to reduce the amount of landscaping right up against your house. So this is a really nice landscape and I'll show you a few plants in this one. Two plants that I wanna showcase here in the orange house are Rocky Mountain Penstemon, which is this blue flowering perennial right here. This is a wonderful perennial to choose. It's native to the area and very resilient so it can tolerate moderate water or um, low water areas and has gorgeous spikes of deep purple flowers. Really really pretty. And then behind that I wanted to talk a little bit about our tall gray rabbit brush. Sometimes it's marketed as tall blue rabbit brush. Um, a really nice uh, spherical shrub. It's got beautiful gray leaves throughout the growing season and then yellow flowers in fall. And it just creates a, such a nice difference in leaf color and texture between green shrubs. So you can see we have this evergreen mugo pine over here. Um, and then we've got uh, a golden current right next to it. And how beautiful this uh, tall blue rabbit brush is right next to all these other green leafed plants. Now I'm on the far east side of the Waterwise neighborhood and the last area that I want to tell you about is the area that you see behind me. This is what we call our Salome Stone Plaza and this is a really interesting area because it doesn't actually have an irrigation system. What we do is when the plants look like they need some water we just simply get out a hose and hand water the plants in this section. So this is another very low water area where we have beautiful plants that can thrive um, with minimal water. So let me show you a few plants from this section. This is Smoky Hill Skullcap, which is a really nice small perennial um, from the eastern plains of Colorado. It gets to be about a foot high and a foot wide, um, and it has these really nice spikes of purple flowers. So a super tough plant that can be a really good addition to your landscape. Golden Hill Golden Aster, a really cute little tiny plant. This is about three to four inches high and about six inches wide. It is a great plant to tuck into different crevices. You can see it's enjoying this little spot between these two boulders. Um, you know, certainly something that is going to get lost in a larger landscape, but if you've got a little area where you want to highlight a cute little bun plant, Golden Hill Golden Aster is a great choice. This plant is really in peak bloom right now. This is butterfly weed or Asclepias tuberosa. It has these glossy green leaves and gorgeous orange flowers that attract butterflies. So talk about a showstopper. This is really incredible right now. This is two different perennials that are kind of growing as one mound. Um, but wow, what an amazing plant. 
It's about a foot tall and about two feet wide and is really striking. This is an area in front of our pink house and I just wanted to showcase a few plants here. Right in the front we have um, Pawnee Butte Sand Cherry which is a low growing shrub that has white flowers in spring, glossy green leaves and bright red fall color. We have Dwarf Baby Blue Rabbit Brush which is about 18 inches tall and about two feet wide. It grows as this tidy blue dome with yellow flowers in the fall. It is so cute and so tidy looking. We have Blonde Ambition Blue Grama Grass, which creates a beautiful display in August. And then we have a few other shrubs behind it. We have some junipers. Um, and what else? We have this over here, which is called Colorado Four O'Clock. It's not in bloom yet, but this is an extremely drought tolerant perennial native plant that has bright pink flowers um, throughout the summer. So all of these plants make a beautiful combination throughout the year together because of their different colors and textures and um, different times that they flower. One thing that we showcase at the WaterWise Demonstration Garden at the Mesa site is 10 different types of grass. So oftentimes people are coming to the demonstration garden to learn about what types of grass are successful in the Pikes Peak region. At the demonstration garden, you're going to see examples of cool season grasses as well as warm season grasses. Cool season grasses are those grasses that grow best in the cooler months of spring and fall. They tend to use quite a bit more water than the other types of grasses during the height of the summer. So we would consider them a higher water use grass, but they also have wonderful traffic tolerance. So we categorize them as high water, high traffic tolerance areas. So the species that we showcase at the demonstration garden include traditional Kentucky bluegrass, turf type tall fescue, Russian wild rye, hard fescue, and sheep fescue. Now, most of these are gonna be watered three days per week in the height of summer, but some of them, like the fescues, can be watered two times per week. So there is some limited water savings by looking at the fescues. The warm season grasses at the demonstration garden are those grasses that require much less water to maintain, but they're also much less traffic tolerant. So for example, we might be able to water these grasses once per week in the height of the summer, um, but they're really not that resilient to traffic because they have a slower growth rate. The warm season grasses are green from mid-May through mid-October and require once a week watering. The warm season grass displays that you'll find at the demonstration garden include blue grama grass, buffalo grass, dog tough grass, and several different native grass mixes. All right, over here is the native shrub walk. The native shrub walk is a lesser known part of the garden. It's way on the far south strip of the property, um, kind of close to the water treatment plant on the other side of the fence. But I wanted to share with you this area because it's got some really good plants in there. If you're looking for the lowest water, lowest maintenance plants that you can add to your landscape, this is a place you want to look. Now this is an area that is watered one to two times per month with drip irrigation. So very low water. We do um, water it pretty consistently to keep the plants green and growing and flowering. If we let it drop lower than that, a lot of them will survive, but um, sometimes they won't flower or look as beautiful as they would if we just gave them a little bit of water. But um, this is a great place to look. So if you're visiting the garden, there's this entrance right here behind me that you can see. This is the walkway that starts a native shrub walk. It goes all the way along the south side of the front parking lot and then comes out on the other side over there. So let me show you a few plants that um, are the minimal maintenance, minimal water options that you can have here in the Pikes Peak region. We're gonna take a little walk down the native shrub walk and see what we find. So the first shrub that I want to talk about is right in front of us. This is called fern bush. This is an amazingly xeric water wise shrub that is worthy of putting in your landscape. It has these beautiful green fern like leaves that come out really in early March. And then you can see right here these clusters of white flowers that are going to start blooming 
in July. This is a fantastic shrub that is really, really tough. And so if you have tough conditions or want to have minimal water landscape, certainly consider fern bush. We have, once again, some of that Pawnee Butte sand cherry, and we have dwarf baby blue rabbit brush that we talked about earlier. We have a few pine trees, some upright junipers, a beautiful pipe sculpture. Well, this is an interesting plant over here. This is called blue stem joint fir. This is a very xeric, low water plant that looks exactly like this all year round. So it's got these kind of upright um, fronds of blue that are fantastic. And then in summer, it will get these orange berries on the female plants. So it's kind of unique and interesting, but what a cool plant if you've got a bigger space. Over here, we have some New Mexican privet that is really gorgeous, green leaves and beautiful yellow fall color. Um, another upright juniper, three leaf sumac right here. So this is a native shrub that you're going to see all throughout the foothills of um, Colorado Springs. Very nice mounding green shrub. It doesn't have any bright flowers or anything, but it does create these um, reddish berries uh, in midsummer and then has nice red fall color that ranges really from yellow to orange to red. Uh, so certainly a good shrub if you have a very low water area or you need to revegetate an area. Don't forget about three leaf sumac. Coming around the corner here. And you can see how you can get back to the parking lot over here. Some more fringe sage along the walkway and on down. Here we have fringe sage and this is a really good plant that um, can be really nice in your landscape. It's got a very soft texture, light gray leaves. This is a native plant to Colorado. You see it all over the place and just don't forget about it in your landscape because it can be really worthwhile. Now I'd like to share with you some of the plant selection resources that Colorado Springs Utilities offers. The first resource is our online plant database called waterwiseplants.org. When you go to this website, it is a great resource for finding plants. We showcase photographs and details of all the plants that we have at the Waterwise Demonstration Garden and showcase what those plants look like throughout the year. When you visit waterwiseplants.org, you'll discover our find a plant tool. This is a wonderful tool that allows you to filter all of the plants that we recommend in order to help you quickly find plants that fit your interests and lifestyle. Not only do we have filters where you can search only for low maintenance plants, extended bloom time, or beginner friendly plants, but we also feature a filter for deer resistant plants that you'll find under the wildlife and pollinators heading. In addition to waterwiseplants.org, we have some wonderful plant lists at csu.org. We have a general plant list that includes plant ideas for your xeriscapes, such as trees, shrubs, perennial flowers, grasses, and ground covers. We also have a deer resistant plant list, and we also have a great deal of information that can help you select the right grass for your yard. We have a comparison chart that showcases all the different attributes of the different grasses that work well in this region. And then we have specific fact sheets for each different type of grass that can help you take a deeper dive if you have a particular interest. Thanks for joining us for the virtual tour of the Colorado Springs Utilities Waterwise Demonstration Gardens. I hope this has been helpful to you and please take advantage of all the rich resources that Colorado Springs Utilities offers regarding waterwise landscaping.